On August 31, 1969, a hush fell over the boxing world when the man who stood at its center, Rocky Marciano, who reigned undefeated with 49 fights, 49 victories, was pronounced dead. Rocky's quest for perfection was fraught with challenges. Balancing personal life and a demanding career, he grappled with his love for family and passion for boxing. His retirement signaled a climax, but the final bell tolled not in a ring, but under unfamiliar circumstances on that fateful August night. Who was Rocky Marciano? How did he rise to greatness? And what delivered his first and last knockout? This is the exploration of the final round of the undefeated Rocky Marciano. Rocky Marciano was the son of Pierino, a humble shoemaker. His path began in the boxing ring in 1947, an embodiment of the determined spirit inherent in his working-class origins. Peeling away the veneer of the heavyweight champion, the gloves, the sweat, and the ring, you would find a man deeply committed to his family. His wife was Barbara Cousins, the daughter of a retired Brockton police sergeant. Their marriage took place on the last day of 1950, bringing forth a daughter, Mary Ann, and an adopted son, Rocco Kevin. However, Marciano, despite being the heavyweight champion of the world, only spent five months in four years with his wife and children. His visits to his Brockton home were so infrequent that each return required a reintroduction to his daughter, Mary Ann, who was just three and a half when Marciano retired. Therefore, Marciano's decision to retire at the pinnacle of his career was not born from fear or exhaustion, but rather an unyielding love for his family. At his core, Rocky Marciano was a man who chose to forfeit his undefeated boxing career to secure life's most precious victories, the smiles of his wife and children. Because when Marianne was very small, he traveled an awful lot and he didn't get to see her very often. So he decided that when his own daughter didn't recognize him, that he'd retire. Even in retirement, Marciano maintained a close relationship with the ring. He remained active, engaging in various business ventures and speaking engagements. He even stepped into the role of a referee. His former peers, such as ex-heavyweight champ Sonny Liston, spoke highly of him, referring to Marciano as one of the greatest champs ever. When Curtis Cox, the former welterweight champion, learned of Marciano's death, he expressed his deep loss, describing Marciano as a fine champion and a fine man whose absence would be felt in the boxing world. Marciano's life outside the ring was as vibrant as his career within it, yet it ended abruptly. But what led to its abrupt end? The day started with the promise of celebration on August 31, 1969, Marciano's 46th birthday. He was on his way to Des Moines, Iowa for a TV appearance, unaware that his fans had planned a surprise birthday party. Nobody could have predicted the tragic turn the day was about to take. On this ill-fated trip, Marciano was joined by Frankie Farrell, a good friend and the son of the notorious mobster Louis Fratto, and Glenn Bells, a young pilot with a scanty flying record of 300 hours and a reputation for reckless flying. Originally, Marciano and Farrell were scheduled to fly with a more seasoned pilot, but a last-minute itinerary change brought Bells onto their path. It was a simple twist of fate, but it ultimately set the stage for the tragedy that was about to occur. As they embarked on this short, routine flight, the weather quickly turned against them. Despite the increasing tension and warnings from airport personnel about the ill-equipped plane, they chose to brave the storm, eager to reach the surprise birthday party, and so they took off into the belly of the storm. Now imagine the last conversation they had with air traffic control, a routine check-in, a mundane exchange, the calm before the storm. From the ground, the sight of the struggling plane was horrifying. Resident Colleen Swartz saw it flying dangerously low. Then, the unthinkable happened. The plane lost control, spiraling from its already shaky flight down to the ground. The aircraft crashed into an isolated oak tree in a desolate cornfield. The devastating impact scattered the wreckage and bodies across the field. The result was catastrophic. The remains of the plane, the champion, and his friends ended up scattered across the field, human beings so quickly reduced to nothing more than bloody, bruised, and partly burnt lumps. How was the crash site found? What followed the crash? How did the world react? Understandably, it took a while for their bodies to be found. The searchers waded through the tall corn stalks, led only by the plumes of smoke against the midnight sky. And there they were, Rocky Marciano, Frankie Farrell, and the young pilot scattered amidst the wreckage. 
and the public? When the news of Rocky Marciano's tragic death spread, it sent shockwaves rippling through the nation. Newspaper headlines screamed the unthinkable, and radio waves carried the somber news to every home and every corner. The heavyweight champion, the unbeaten icon, was no more. People gathered around radios, listening to the updates in shared silence. The murmur of disbelief echoed from the urban sprawl of New York to the quieter streets of Rocky's hometown, Brockton. Bars, gyms, workplaces. The news spread like wildfire, bringing everyday life to a standstill. Grown men wept in the streets, clutching the morning papers as their hero's smiling face splashed across the front page. Mothers hugged their children a little tighter, reminded of the fragility of life. Fans laid flowers and letters at the doors of his old boxing gym, turning it into a shrine. His statue in Champion Park on the campus of Brockton High School turned into a place of mourning, with candlelight vigils surrounding it for weeks. The boxing world was in disarray, with disbelief echoing in every gym and every ring. They had lost their undefeated heavyweight champion, and it felt as though a part of the sport itself had died with him. I lost a great friend, uh, and it's certainly a, a great man for, to boxing. He was, he was a great champion. Uh, in fact, I just saw him just a few weeks ago in Las Vegas. He'd come out to receive the greatest fight of the century award. I've had the sports writer down at that Sands Hotel, and he was the greatest fight of the century. I think he was a great champion. You can imagine the sorrow that swept over Marciano's family. It was tragic, the loss of a husband, a father, and a brother. Rocky Marciano may have been a champion to the world, but to them, he was their world. And just like that, he was gone. What a tragedy it was. Now the NTSB were the ones who scrutinized every nut, bolt, and wire of the crashed aircraft and pieced together the final moments of the tragic flight. What did they find? The investigation revealed quite a bit. Two major factors led to the disaster. First, the unpredictable and treacherous weather that night. And second, the young pilot, barely 32 and with limited experience in night flying. A recipe for disaster was brewing, but no one saw it. The NTSB reached harsh but necessary conclusions. The tragedy, they said, could have been avoided had the pilot not embarked on a risky flight amidst challenging weather conditions. And from the ashes of this tragedy, lessons were learned. The NTSB recommended stricter regulations on pilot training, emphasizing the importance of handling harsh weather conditions. It was a dark day, yes, but one that spurred change. How did they pay tribute to this undefeated champion? Boxing gyms became sanctuaries of sorrow. Gloves were hung, heads were lowered, and for a while the punching bags swayed in painful silence. The boxing world mourned its champion in its own unique way. Flowers bloomed at his grave, a silent tribute to the fallen champion. The ring was left waiting for another legend who could maybe, just maybe, fill the void left by Marciano. Yet amidst the sorrow and the grief, Rocky's spirit lived on. His legacy, etched in golden letters in the annals of boxing, continued to inspire and motivate. A tribute to the man who always got back up, no matter how hard life punched. In the end, what we have here is the story of a champion, a man whose name echoed in the boxing ring and beyond. Rocky Marciano, undefeated in his professional career, faced his toughest and tragically, his final match against a force even he couldn't defeat, fate. Marciano's life was an inspiration, a beacon for aspiring boxers and dreamers alike, but his death was a sobering reminder of the unpredictable turns life can take, and the accident left a lasting impact, not just on the world of boxing, but also in the realm of aviation. Tougher regulations and enhanced pilot training, Marciano's untimely death gave a wake-up call to the aviation industry. But let's not forget, the boxing ring lost a titan that day. It was a blow that echoed through the boxing community and left a void that was hard to fill. Stories like these remind us of the relentless spirit of humans, don't they? How we learn, adapt, and improve, even in the face of heartbreaking tragedy. It's this very spirit that ensures the legacy of Rocky Marciano lives on. We hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the life and untimely death of Rocky Marciano. Join us next time as we continue to explore the intriguing world of sports legends and the stories that define them.